What's uh, nice what's the house view? What's the what's the Ellis view of what we're going to hear later today? And, and then maybe we'll get into how you positioned yourself as a result. I, I think Steve was pretty accurate 10 minutes ago. You know, Powell's got to be a little bit hard. He's got to be pleased with the fact inflation is coming off. And you could see we're, we're in the beginnings of a run down to a 4% inflation somewhere in the next summer. So, but but he's not going to sound that dovish because, yeah, I'm not sure 4% is enough, right? And so if that's the case, how have you uh, reset your portfolio over the last six months with this in mind? Sure. I, I, look, I think the, the important thing of these markets is while you can have beliefs about the long term, the path to get there is going to be very varied. You know, you've seen all of the all of the banks coming out with this idea that, you know, we're going to see a new low in the sort of 3,200 sort of level, maybe 3,400, and we're also going to see a new high of 4,500. That's probably the range for next year, but the idea that they can predict exactly the path seems to us uh, uh, an unlikely thing. So, so you've got to remain nimble. Right now, well, well, what does that mean like, for you? Well, r right now, it feels like it, it feels like the market wants to drift up. Once we get through, there's an awful lot of gamma that's got to clear its way on Friday with the options expiry. That should then let us drift up. But equally, we have somewhere in next year we have some ugly earnings coming. You know, even if we think inflation is going to come down to a four, maybe even a three handle. I also think you're going to see ISMs down to sort of 45 to 47 level, which is consistent with a 15% cut in earnings somewhere. But but will it be, you know, the street is convinced it's going to be with the earnings in January. I must say, I suspect companies are not going to be that negative in January. And so we might roll up for, for a while until we start getting the bad news on growth. And so what, but as a function of that, are you, you're, so it sounds like you're, you're playing this melt up situation with an expectation that you're going to have to have to get defensive at a, at a, at a point later, later in the game? Yeah, look, I, I, I think it's really the next year is likely to see a wide range, right? Uh, that, that sort of 32 to 48 range is, is a sensible range. That's really wide by historic standards. And I don't think it's going to be a linear path. So I think is there it's anything if you, you're, you, you're a long term investor, is there any sort of set it and forget it investment out there for you right now? No, it's the short version. I think, it, you know, look, the, the we all had it really easy from the financial crisis through to the last year where basically you could hold on to anything and as much of it as possible. And you made money over time. I think in these higher inflation times, you get more economic volatility. That means markets move around a lot more because there's a lot more uncertainty. I think being nimble is really important. You know, I don't think there's anything that's a buy and hold at this point.